Hi there guys, welcome back to another C Sharp tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to see how we can use multiple arrays at the same time to store different type of information different types of information for uh, the same unit. Okay, so let me explain what do I mean by this. Let's say you want you want to write a program uh, in such a way that you will not only store, let's say, names. So far, we have learned how we could read numbers, right? So you would write the numbers, uh, store numbers 10, 20, 30 into an array. But what if you want to write a program that would store the names with some uh, and some numbers? For example, Smith would say uh, 30 uh, is 8, right? And there will be another record, for example, Todd is 20. And James is uh, 25. Okay. So now the question is how do you store this kind of information? Well, what, have, what we have learned so far is uh, uh, creating array. Uh, of one data type. So, we have worked with numbers, so you could create an array of numbers. Okay, 20 and 25. Okay, so this is an array of numbers, it contains three elements only. Now, the question is how do you store the names? Well, you create another array, you put Smith and Todd and James into that array. So, basically, uh, you will have two different arrays. One array to st store the names and one array to store the numbers. Now, one of the important things that you need to remember if you are going to do uh, this is the order of values. So, what you see here is that, for example, Smith is the first element, right? and Smith is of age 30. For this reason, the first element in the second array or in the other array should be also 30. In other words, the order of these values should match. Okay? Same thing for Todd. You can see Todd's the second element. His age is the second element in the second array. The same applies here third for James and so on. So it's as simple as that. So, uh, now we are going to write a simple program that will do that. Now we're going to say static void read name age. Now I will define an array of string names and an array of integer names. <coughs> Sorry. And let me the comma ref uh, uh, len. Okay. So first thing we are gonna say. Uh, system console right enter a number of uh, elements okay and here we would say len equal and dot parse system console read line okay so now we've got the number of elements. Oh, sorry, I forgot to specify the data type here. Okay, now it's working. The next thing we need to do is to allocate uh, the values, uh, right? So here we are going to say names. Uh, okay, sorry, uh, we've already we already passed the array, so now we are gonna. Uh, read them, right? 
So 4 int i equals 0 and i smaller than n and i plus plus. Okay, so what, what do we do here? We ask the user to enter the name system console write enter the a uh, sorry name where is this format here you could put a comma here if I'm not mistaken and you could put i plus one something like that okay and then uh, you could say uh, names of i equals system console read line okay so in this statement we have managed to do what we have managed to uh, read the name we need to read the age so we would say system console write enter age and you put this uh, in bracket zero this will be replaced by a parameter in this case i plus one okay and uh, next we would say age of i equal int dot parse system console read line okay so as you can see when when we are reading these values you can see that we are using the same index which would guarantee that the values we are reading will be stored for, for the same person the location of the element indicates which record that these values belong to okay. so this is the first one next we are going to do another method to, to print this so static void print name eight and we have string names and ages sorry and and land so what do we have we would say for int i equals zero i small than land i plus plus we are going to say something like this system console write line okay uh, name I'm going to say something like this is and the age is and put the dot over here. So now we need to specify the parameter. First parameter would be i plus one. Second parameter names of i. And the last one would be ages oops of i. And that's it. This simple method will print everything. Okay. Uh, one last thing we need to do is to define the uh, as to test the, these methods. So here we have int n and this will be an array of string sorry string and int a equal new int 100 and then we're gonna say read name h oops and L. Okay, here we go. So we need to pass N and A and print L. Okay, and then what do we have? We have print name H N A L. Okay, so we can see in this method we are passing the array of names, array of ages, and the, the reference of. Uh, uh, we are passing the number of elements. This variable will be passed by reference, so we can know how many elements to read, and so on. And uh, the same thing, okay, uh, it's almost the same here, but we are just passing by value in order to just print. That's it. So let us save this and run the code. Hopefully, it will work. Okay, number of elements, uh, three. 
So we're going to say Todd and his age 30, James 25, Todd James Michael for example and 33. So you can see now name 1 is Todd and the age is 30, name 2 is James and the age is 25, name 3 is Michael and the age is 33. Okay, so the trick here is very simple. The whole idea of this example is that when you have, when you need to save information uh, of different data types for different uh, kind of elements. In our case, the element represented, uh, uh, sorry, represents the name of the person and the age. We use two different arrays. Okay, uh, and you check the location, the location uh, will tell you which record the values belong to. Uh, now, to make the idea a little bit more clear, let us consider another example. I won't write another program, but just an illustration. Uh, let's say in this case, you have a student Okay, you, you can try doing this at home and see how you can work with that. You have a student, and the student have what? Have a math uh, uh, exam result as uh, chemistry uh, uh, exam result have uh, uh, physics uh, physics okay Chem chemistry. Physics uh, and what also do we have? We have uh, let's say English, whatever. Okay, so this students have uh, need, uh, have the exam results of uh, four subjects. So how do you store the information for that student? Well, we will use the same technique here. We will create an array. Okay. Uh, array one student uh, okay this would be what I'm gonna, or you could say it's a student array of types of training okay another one is math uh, this will be an array of type integer let's say that the exam results are all integer values and you would use another ar uh, array uh, chemist, I will call it, and this will be an array of type integer, okay, and another array PHY, this is an array of type uh, integer, and so on, okay, so, in this simple idea, or this simple example, uh, what type of information do you need to store for a student? It's a uh, well, these are five fields. Because of that, you create five arrays. Each array would, would represent one of the attributes that belong to every student. Okay, uh, let's say, for example, you have uh, you want to write a program to store the information about cars that you want to sell. Uh, so, what you need to ask yourself in this case, what kind of attributes do you want to uh, store in the program regarding the cars? Well, maybe you have the model of the car, maybe you have uh, the color of the car, uh, let's say pricing, uh, cost power, whatever, and so on. So, later on, when you are working, you could create an array uh, that would, would store the, the model attribute for all the cars you can create an array that will store the color attributes for all the cars another array that will store the price attributes for all the cars and so on you will follow the same example now one of the important things that although I'm telling you this this is not the way you you store the information. I mean, uh, this is one way, but this is not how programmers do it. Later on, we will get into structures. Structures would simplify this work a lot. But for now, the idea 
is to train you on how to work with arrays and if you based on what you know so far if you want to work with uh, such examples you could uh, you could address these problems using, using this simple technique okay so that will be all for today thanks for watching and uh, have a nice day bye bye